Boy, have the last couple of days been a whirlwind of figure skating goodness. Mostly goodness. Some not so goodness, but mostly goodness. And I have a lot of recaps to get to, but before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm going to go back to the Pears Free Skate that took place yesterday. <laughs> After the disaster that was the pair's short program, I wasn't quite sure what to expect from the free skate, except that several of the teams that really needed to move up have the programs to facilitate that move. But before we get to those top teams, let's start with Mary Beth Marley and Rockney Brubaker of the U.S. Now, as you're well aware by now, this is a team that I see so much potential in, and we have seen so much improvement in over the season, but they are still very new. And by they, I mostly mean Mary Beth, in that this is really just the beginning of her pair's career, and she has so much to learn and so far to come. She's got a lot of catching up to do, but this girl, she's a sharp one, and she's picking up very quickly. Some of their pair's elements still aren't going to match up with the best in the world. They didn't have their best split triple twist here today. They had some strong throws. They had some issues on some other things in the program, some side-by-side -side elements. Things like their side-by-side -side spins tend to be out of sync, and they just weren't quite sure of themselves in everything today. But that said, this was a very, very solid debut for them. Finishing 10th in the world in your senior world debut, not too shabby, especially for a pairs team that no one really had dramatic expectations of. So good for them. The other American team of Katie Denny and John Coughlin, they did have some expectations simply because they performed so well together in such a short amount of time as a pair. They have so much talent, so much raw, untapped talent, and the problem here is that a lot of it remains untapped. They don't have the technical difficulty. They don't have the intricacies in the choreography and in the transitions and in the spins and in you know all of those things that add up in that technical mark, but more importantly, the things that build that program component mark. Some areas of that have improved since Nationals. I feel like their connection and their expression and their overall performance has improved. But some of those things, in fact, many of those things are choreographical things, levels, transitions, linking steps, things that make what they do that's so great even more difficult and thus provides the option for more points. They don't have those things yet. And in that case, they weren't going to be able to match up with a lot of the top teams unless there were significant mistakes. Again, that said, top 10 finish, they finished eighth overall. Now I know they would have liked to finish higher, but both American pairs teams in the top 10, they kind of snuck in under the radar and uh, took took that top 10 finish by storm, and they should be very proud of the programs and the placements they, that they ended up with here. Moving on up, though, there was going to be quite the battle in order to try to regain some of the position to try to land on the podium, especially with teams like Kaviguti and Smirnov and Belosazar and Trankov. So low in the standings after the short program in 8th and 11th, trying to get back onto the podium. Kaviguti and Smirnov have a glorious free skate that I could watch over and over and over and over again. However, they got through most of it and then there were mistakes. And they were mistakes enough that it kept them from climbing back up the ladder. Because the teams ahead of them, well most of the teams ahead of them still skated well. They moved up from 11th to 7th. But when you go in as one of the three gold medal favorites, it's not really the finish they were going for. So back to the drawing board for them, they need to establish a level of consistency in all of those elements because so much of what they do is so gorgeous on the ice. It's just a matter of reining it all in and putting it all out at the same time. Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford, I had to think for a minute, it's been a long week had a great free skate. This is 
one of my favorite free skates, particularly because of the music choice and of some of the choreographic choices, the nuances throughout of any free skate skated this season in any discipline. I love what they do in this program. And while it wasn't Canadian Nationals, it was strong, and they did a lot of really good things, and I love their attack on all of their elements, particularly a team that's going for side-by-side -side triple letzes. What? Nobody does that, so an amazing choice for them to go for that element, and while they had some troubles with it here in this event, I still have to applaud them for that effort, because it's, that's not something that anyone, even the top teams, even the eventual champions at this event, are willing to risk. So. Good for them moving up to fifth in the world. I think that's a very respectable finish, and they certainly have some things that they can work on for next season as well. The wild cards here of Pang and Tong had a rough go of it in the free skate. They just never really looked over their skates, and it showed in all of their elements. I mean, we saw them miss things that I don't know if we've ever really seen them miss, at least not in recent memory, because technically they tend to be so strong. But because of those technical glitches, it harmed them in the overall content of their program, and they really just struggled throughout. They were sixth in the free skate. Now, because of the strength of their short program, they ended up fourth overall, but not quite the comeback to the skating world that they were hoping for, although they're still a wonderful team to watch. They have this air about them that's so regal and magnificent. They're still beautiful to watch, even if the technical content wasn't quite there this this time. Tatiana Volosazar and Maxim Trankov, again, eighth in the short program, they skated very early in this free skate. And they were my choice to win gold here for this reason. This program was brilliant. The choreography in this program has been strong for them all season. But when they took the ice, and this happens on a rare occasion, particularly in championship type skates, you saw it in their face. They were going to hit, they were not going to give an inch, they were going to nail every single element, and that's exactly what they went out and did. They skated the best free skate of the night. They won the free skate, and they did enough to overcome that deficit of being in eighth place to guarantee themselves a spot on the podium after several of the teams that had been in higher positions struggled. And they did everything that they needed to do to still try to give themselves a chance to win that world gold medal over Savchenko and Sulkowy, who we'll get to in a moment. Velocizar and Trenkov are stunningly beautiful skaters and they pulled off the technical content in addition to that. They are what I was looking for in this competition, and after so many troubles throughout all of the short programs and throughout all of the things that we'd seen up until that point, it was like a sigh of relief to finally have a program that was awe-inspiring and emotional, and they were so proud of it at the end. It was brilliant to see. Subchenko and Solkowy were in fact, in the position to repeat as the world champions. And they didn't have to do all of the most difficult things that we've seen them do. They didn't have to do the throw triple axle, and they didn't. They haven't really put it in the free skate much this season, so they didn't go for it here. This program is so them, and by that I mean it's so detailed and everything that they do is so unique and has a twist on it that makes it very, very difficult for one, and two, very different than anything else you're going to see. They don't have the same awe-inspiring quality in this particular free skate that Tatiana and Maxim do. It's just not the same artistically in a lot of ways, and they didn't skate it flawlessly here. There were some errors that really chopped it up a little bit and kept it from being that over-the-top wow moment of a world title skate. They came in second in the free skate, and it was a lot closer than they would have liked for it to be. And the reality is they won their world title. They won it 
by 0.11. 11, <laughs> 11 tenths of a point determined the world title in 2012, which only leaves you to imagine that if Volosazar and Trenkov really had skated the short program that we expected them to, perhaps they would be the world champions instead. But they settled for silver for the second year in a row. The bronze medalist, though, stole the show. Narumi Takahashi and Mervyn Tran had that brilliant short program that we all were so in love with after the fact, and they haven't been the most consistent, to say the least, uh, in their skating this season. So coming in, in that position to medal, no one quite knew what to expect from them. They brought the house down. They had a skate that they will remember for the rest of their lives. And after they finished the program, of course they were proud and they were excited and it was a program filled with emotion and passion and beauty and elegance and artistry, all those things on that artistic side that you want to see. But they also hit the jumps, they hit the throws, they hit the big elements, and they did all of those technical things that have been lacking at times for them this season. So they knew that they had done their job, but what they didn't know is that they had meddled. And perhaps the most endearing moment of these entire championships was when they realized that they had landed themselves a spot on the podium, and their coach said, you meddled, you meddled, and then they jumped up and down and were in tears and were screaming and so excited and it was one of those moments that you just have to stop and watch because it was so endearing and it was so sweet and you couldn't help but be excited for them and uh, they kind of stole the show from the top two despite their solid performances as well. All in all, a much better free skate than it was a short program. Hopefully you've been following me on Twitter this week. If you're not, just uh, head over to Twitter, at FromTheBoards, and check out my timeline there. If you've been following me this week, though, you have seen that I've posted a spreadsheet of the protocol comparisons between some of the top teams. You can check that out on Twitter. You can also find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash FromTheBoards, and I will try to repost some of those pictures uh, in an album for the 2011 World Championships tomorrow or early this week so that you can take a closer look at just how those elements broke down and the points added up for those top teams and some of the teams that pulled off the performances that we were expecting from them at this World Championships. That helps to break it down for me and I hope you enjoy that breakdown as well. And that was that. The second set of champions were crowned and medalists were awarded and we had a very happy trio of pairs teams on the podium here in this event. But that was not the end. In fact, it was only the beginning of a lot more drama to come on the final day of competition with the men's free skate and the ladies free skate with titles on the line. There was plenty of drama and a little bit of controversy as well, so keep an eye out for those recaps coming soon at From the Boards.